Hello people, Suffolk Sport Glide Rider here. Please remember in all my videos, I'm not a professional filmmaker or videographer, I'm purely an amateur. And please remember I'm not a professional mechanic either. Just an amateur trying to show that some jobs can be done at home, saving a bit of time and money, and the satisfaction that you can do the jobs yourself. Thanks for watching. In this week's uh, video, part one, I'm showing you how to change out the OEM horn for one that is a bit louder. And in part two, I'm exchanging the risers, handlebar risers, for four inch risers. And please remember the official workshop manual for the bike, no matter what jobs you're doing, the first thing it says is to remove the main fuse. If you wish to miss the horn part and go straight to uh, the riser changes, uh, fast forward to around about 10 to 10 and a half minutes and that should get you to the right place. We all know that the standard horn on any motorbike, no matter what the make is, is pretty feeble, it's pretty naff. So what we're gonna do here I'm going to swap out the horn, which is located at the front, with a more of an air horn. On previous bikes I've had, I've always got this sort of horn because they're better. And the ones I've had before have only got one terminal and the earth is taken off of the nut. Whereas on the Harley one, there's two terminals, which is why I've bought this one. So there's two terminals clearly marked on the bike red which will be the positive coming in and the other one will be going to earth so it should work just the same it should bolt into the same hole without uh, any problems whatsoever saves a lot of mucking about and the horn tone you'll see in a minute should be slightly better so a little bit of a farting about but at the top straight above the horn there is a uh, 3 8 bolt. Undo that bolt and the whole bracket that's supporting it drops down. Then there's two further screws to undo. So let's undo that bolt first. So once you've undone the big bolt, the whole bracket assembly drops down. And then you've got two Torx head screws to undo one on either side of that bracket and then the whole horn assembly will come out just get me Torx bits out and I'll let you know what size that is okay so that is a size 20 Torx bits to undo those two screws okay one thing I forgot to mention as with all electrics the workshop manual does tell you to pop out the uh, main fuse before doing any electrical work that's what the book says okay so once you've undone those two screws the whole horn assembly drops forward so you can get to the rear to undo the nut that holds the horn in and it will be easier to get the two electrical contacts to unplug to then plug into the new horn simples as they say and at a guess I'll say the horn is obviously Japanese in origin um, the nut on the back is a 10 millimeter nut 10 millimeters so you undo the nut on the back then that whole bracket will come away so you're left with the horn just connected by the two wires. Disconnect the wires, you get the horn off. So let's stick the other one in and see if it is a bit louder. So not connected up as sat or fixed in place. Just put the wires in just to see if the horn is louder. Well, 
I think we can all agree that it's definitely louder than the standard horn. So for the sake of a few quid, it's not very often we have to toot our horns, but uh, occasionally there are a few idiots that don't see motorbikes. So good idea to change it just for the emergency use. So let's uh, put it back together. As with everything, I have the sheet here that I printed off from the workshop manual, complete, uh, complete with the various torque settings to make sure everything's torqued up as it should be. Uh, some are in foot pounds, some are in inch pounds, but I'll uh, talk through it as we go through it. One thing I didn't mention, this kit actually came with a pair of horns, but I'm only using one. Um, they all also come with a relay. Most accessories you put on a motorbike will come with a relay. So if you prefer, you can use the relay, but if you do that, you need to run a separate power for the horn. So what you would do, the existing two wires on the horn, you'd connect onto the two terminals on the relay, then you'd have a power in and a power out. So when you press your horn button, be a millisecond delay while that clicks and then puts your own power to the horn with its own fuse. Um, but it's the same rating horn as this is, so it's not going to draw any more power. And as I'm only putting the one horn there, on there, I'm not, I haven't bothered putting the relay in. The choice, of course, would be yours. Now, the one thing they don't give a torque setting for is the nut on the back of the horn, because they don't expect you to take the horn off the bracket. Um, but it's uh, got captive lock nuts on there. What I'll do is put a tiny drop of uh, blue Loctite on there as well, and then that's uh, not going to move. Then just do it up tight, because it was pretty tight when I took it off. So a tiny dab of blue Loctite, and that, remember, was a 10 millimeter. It's the metric size. Hard to get the camera in there to show you really, but the next ones to do up with the two little screws that go through the sides of the bracket, and they were Torx screws, don't forget. They're 20, size 20 Torx bit, and the uh, torque to set them on is 27 to 33 inch pounds. It's 27 to 33 inch pounds. So that's those two small screws torqued up. So the next is the big one, because it's the only one left. And that was the 3 eighths of an inch socket. And that is going to be torqued up to <coughs> 7 to 9 foot pounds. So 79 foot-pounds to the last remaining bolt to bolt it back into place. Slight amendment, what I said about the two uh, torque screws, they were size 25 torque bit, not 20. Size 25 torque bit. But if you got this far on taking it off, you would have realised by now. So the next one, the main bolt to tighten up three eighths of an inch and we're putting that to 79 foot pounds or 9.4 to 12 newton meters so as my uh, big torque wrench is in newton meters that's what we shall go for so we know it's hard to see it under there but all back in place all rock solid all the bolts done up per torque as uh, specified and uh, definitely louder than it was before just to show you it does still work now it's all wired in and uh, bolted back in place <coughs> definitely louder than the OEM um, but that's the same with all bikes, they're, they're pretty feeble, the horns that come with bikes as standard. Got to uh, keep these cars aware of uh, their surroundings. Okay, part two of this week's video, um, changing the risers to four inch from the originals.
Okay, ever since I've had the bike, I've been thinking of raising the bars up a bit. I really want them bringing a little bit closer to me, only by about an inch. Um, obviously, there's lots of uh, risers on the market. Harley ones, four inch riser to bring it back, it's slightly curved to bring it back. They're 200 UK pounds, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, a good friend of mine has given me his pair of four inch risers that came off of a fat bob. So it only lifts it up a little bit more, well basically two inches more, and because of the angle of the forks it will bring it back a slight bit. Okay they're black but instead of chrome, but I'm going to use these for the moment to fit and decide if that's the right um, rise and pull back that I need. Obviously the first thing to think about is the protection of the bike and especially the tank. So. The old sheet I used to cover it up as a dust sheet, but also got a pillow there underneath that now. So lots of nice padding on there when I pull the handlebars off and I can rest them what would be on the tank. We don't want it on the tank. Nice and padded so we're not going to damage anything. Obviously the main concern is, are all the cables going to be long enough? Um, internally here, hopefully there's enough slack to raise it up because it's only two inches higher up. And... Uh, as standard the clutch cable comes out the lever and goes behind the handlebar I may well have to disconnect that and put it in front of the handlebar as they're coming back a little bit but we'll know in time it's only once I get them off and we'll see what slack we've got on all the cables so one of the first things is going to be to move my mobile phone mount out the way of the top clamp on the risers so that's handy just turn it round there so top clamper uh, allen bolts that's it look see and see what size they are So that is a quarter inch Allen key, hexagonal key, quarter inch. <coughs> An important thing to do before I remove them, just put a bit of tape around the edge of the bar so you know exactly whether it would be easier to line it up in the centre once you get the new bars back on or the new risers, you'll be able to gauge the distance. getting dead centre which is obviously very important now we're not going to take these right off we just want to loosen them very slightly to make sure they will come undone because we still want them in place when we undo these under here Obviously with your standard Allen key, I'm not using it on the uh, the long arm torque wrench or anything. So just use a little bar just to give you that little bit more leverage to undo them. Okay then, that's them loose enough. Let's see about un undoing the, well, you can see they're loose enough, they just slipped down. Let's see about undoing the bottom bolts. Or what I should say is the bottom nut. Some risers you'll find they've got have actually got a bolt that goes into the riser 
on the stand these ones it's actually a stud the same as you'd get on your exhaust uh, manifold so it's a uh, screwed in at each end with a blank bit in the middle so yeah nut, nut thread at each end of a nut end at each end of a, a long bolt and these nuts are a three quarters AF three quarter AF And the other thing undoing these you don't know if you've cracked the thread on this nut to the end of the thread or whether you're going to take the whole stud out from the top end of the uh, riser so we'll just have to see as we unscrew them looking at that um, the threads disappearing so I am actually unscrewing it from this end not the whole uh, stud coming out we're getting it so try and do them evenly so it doesn't sort of all fall off of one side And also, as always, take great care, put your fingers in the way rather than scratch your headlight or the forks or anything else. Take your time, protect what's, uh, what's valuable. I don't think these will ever get to be finger tight. No, even that side where it's almost off. Now this side is opposite, that side was coming off so the nut's coming off the stud, this side it's actually the stud that's unscrewing from the inside of the riser. Bit annoying but there we go, that's life. Anyway, as I know I've cracked the seal on them, I'm going to take the top clamp off now and just rest the uh, handlebars onto the pillow that I've put there. That's our bolts undone on the top clamp. Let's hold on to the handlebars. So we don't want anything to get scratched at this stage. Put that on the seat, drag me pillow forward. A little bit awkward with having the phone mount on there. And looking at that, I'm pretty damn sure, yes, the cables have got enough play in it to put the new risers on. Just try and gently rest that there on an old pillow. Yeah, don't use your, your wife's best slumberland pillow. But uh, yeah, we're getting there. Undo this one first because it seems looser. Now if you've got the workshop manual, you will see that there's various bushings and washers etc. underneath these things. all of which we need to keep in the same order in place. So there's one of the original risers off. And if I was to drop that out, you would see all the bushings, etc. But what I'm going to do, as that's come out with the stud still on there, I'm just going to screw this one on so that everything stays in place where it was. For the time being, so that's going to hold it in place anyway for the moment.
Sorry about that, folks. Uh, the battery had flattened or turned off on the camera. So, but all you've missed is me just doing exactly the same to the right hand riser as I did to the left. I just unbolted it, then bolted the new one back in place. Then I realised the camera had turned off. Nearly forgot to show you this. On the left hand side of the bike, you got a black plastic tube and that is covering a connection on the clutch cable. So you slide that up out of the way and then you come across two little red buttons. You have to squeeze them in uh, with a screwdriver, uh, scru screwdriver or a pair of pliers. Then the other side of that, this will pop out. And by popping that out, the cable will separate. The cable goes all the way down in there, but this is just a, a joint between two separate parts of cable. Makes it easier to put a longer clutch cable in with super high rise handlebars. And in our case, just to disconnect the cable there, it splits into two. So after you've released that uh, little clip, it takes the slat or the tension off the cable. So then coming up to the top, we can then disconnect the cable by pulling it out of the handlebar. Just like so, pull that out of the handlebar. And then what we'll do is take this pin out so that the clutch lever comes off, can move the cable round and then connect it all up again. But on the bottom of that pin, bottom of the pin, we have a uh, tiny circlip in there to stop the pin coming out under normal use. So a pair of long nose pliers and that uh, circlip will come off. Then just push on the uh, the pin and that will come out. Let's put the camera back on the tripod. So push on the pin from underneath, that pin will come out nice and easy. All nicely greased so be careful where you get it then the clutch lever will come off and we can now move clutch lever comes off so we can now move that under the other side of the handlebar under the other side of the handlebar just like so then it's just connecting it back up again While it's off, you can of, sure, can of course make sure it's all greased up. With only three and a half thousand miles on the bike, it is. So just like that, the pin pops in. Now just put the circlip back on the bottom. Okay, circlip back on the bottom. A little bit fiddly because it's in the dark under there, so hold the torch in your mouth. Then you can get that circlip back in the groove so that pin is not going to pop out and you're not going to lose your clutch lever as you're driving along. And to make sure it didn't fall out while I was doing it, I actually popped the cable back into the handle first. So that all we'll do, go down the bottom and put that red clip back in. Okay, having moved the clutch cable, all the other cables are going to be fine. We need to roughly get these at uh, the angle they're going to be. Tighten down these top clamps a little bit. 
so they're not flopping all over the place. Then we'll make some very uh, small adjustments to get it right. Really, it's a good job that um, if the missus is at home and she's not busy washing and hoovering, get to come out and sit here and hold the handlebars for a bit. Either hold the handlebars or uh, turn the Allen key in the nuts, or in the bolts, I should say. I'm sure she'd be delighted to do that as she brings you out another cup of tea. The other reason for doing these top clamps up at this stage, not just to get the handlebars right, but to make sure that the um, the risers are actually at the right angle to what they should be. I haven't put camera cut out. I haven't put Loctite on these bolts at the moment. Um, I'll check the workshop manual, but I think it just requires them to be done to a specified torque. I shall check the workshop manual in a minute. Obviously, the idea of putting these on now is to make sure that the risers are lined up, or the lower half of the risers are lined up in the right place, not slightly skew width. We're getting there. Okay, and then for anyone that's thinking there might not be enough slack in the cable, you know, there's tons of slack there. So these are four inch risers, whereas the original I suppose were about two, the original risers. Handlebars roughly in the right place. Here we are back at the bike with the sheet printed out from the workshop manual. The flange nuts underneath, these are done up to 30 to 40 foot pounds. That's 40.7 to 54.3 newton meters. 30 to 40 foot pounds, 40.7 to 54.3 newton meters. And the handlebar clamps, the nuts on the top here, are 12 to 16 foot pounds, which is 16.3 to 21.7 newton meters. So I'll go ahead going to tighten the bottom flange nuts up not going to do those until I've sat on the bike and checked the angle of the handlebars make sure that's right these things are never as simple as they seem because the head on the torque wrench is so much bigger it's going to bash the headlight when I try and get the uh, the socket onto the nut to do it up so carefully without stretching it put a bit of electrical tape from here to the yoke and mark it with your pen then I'll take that off very carefully as I say so we haven't stretched the tape at all which it does tend to do then I can undo the uh, nut on the headlamp to drop it forward then I know I'm going to get it back in exactly the right place straight away without having to fart about in the dark lining it up against a brick wall headlamp doesn't move very far without taking off but it is just enough to get the torque wrench on there set up to 42 newton meters it 
to one side. Turn the handle bar a bit more so we don't bash the tank. So that's the flange nuts, both torqued up so we know they're not going to fall off. Very carefully put our bit of uh, tape back and our headlight back to the position it was in. Which with my pencil mark Bang on. Yeah, just getting the side to do that bolt up again. Holding the headlamp so it doesn't move. Marvellous. <coughs> okay, dropped it off the stand um, just to see if the riding position is right for me. Handlebars feel good. Obviously they're tipped slightly back than they were before, so the mirrors are looking at the grain. And obviously my uh, camera's looking you know, six foot up in the air. So they need tipping forward slightly. Um, but yeah, where the riding position is, instead of just bringing it straight up, you have to turn it back very slightly, but all the controls are perfect. Job well done. Just tidy it up now, sort the mirrors out and the camera and everything else. But it feels good. And then we'll have to go for a test ride just to make sure. The air clutch is fine, goes into gear and everything. But that's quite simple to do, as I showed you. And yeah, good idea putting the red tape on there, so got the handlebars centralised left to right perfectly. All talked up uh, and ready to go. So, popped indoors to make the cup of tea. So all that's left now is to go over it, polishing cloth, clean off any uh, marks, fingerprints, etc. And then it's all ready to rock and roll again. Important to get the greasy fingerprints off. Thanks for watching people, hope uh, it's been of use to some of you and hope you've enjoyed it. Catch you soon, ride safe.